the Duke and Duchess of Cornwall were welcomed at the presidential villa in Abuja where they met uh, President Muhammad Buhari. And resident professor at the Policy Institute King's College, London, Andrew McLeod, joins us now uh, to talk about the significance of the visit. Well, thank you very much indeed for joining us this hour. Pleasure. Good afternoon. Right. Let me uh, start by asking, what do you think would be the significance of this visit to Nigeria and how Nigeria would benefit from it? Well, I think there are two significant uh, issues. The first one is Britain is trying to reinvent itself post-Brexit and sees as an objective the need to better integrate with the Commonwealth. But there are two things to think about from this. There are many opportunities if we can convert the Commonwealth into a pseudo trading bloc and turn it into more than just a loose alliance of countries. However, I'm from Australia. And I find it kind of bewildering that Britain is trying to re-engage as the former colonial power. And as your introduction just said, Prince Charles is going to become the head of the Commonwealth after his mother. But the question on that is, well, most Commonwealth countries are republics. The head of the Commonwealth is not a hereditary role. So my question is whether Britain is trying to re-engage with the Commonwealth to be the leader again, to be the, the head of the colonies again, or whether it's really seeking to engage as an equal. All right, and will it work? Going by your analysis, uh, mostly when you look at the choice of the countries that the royal couple uh, have visited, uh, the Gambia, Ghana, and now in Nigeria, Prof. Look, I think that there is some opportunity to, to work. I mean, Prince Harry has just been in my country of Australia. But what Britain hasn't quite understood yet is most of the former Com Commonwealth countries and current Commonwealth countries have moved on since they were colonies. Australia had 60% of its trade with the United Kingdom in the 1960s, only 1.9% now. ECOWAS is a very strong and vibrant economic community in West Africa now. Didn't exist when Nigeria was last a colony. So I think there are two things. It's nice to have these royals come and visit. It's very pleasant, but Britain can't think for a second we're going to be colonies again. The Duke would also be meeting with uh, the business community in Nigeria. Uh, what are the areas of concentration, you think, in your opinion? I think this is a really good question. I think there are some challenges for Britain after Brexit where they might be losing some of their agricultural markets. If they leave the EU, they might be losing some of their tourism markets. And of course, there needs to be an increase of skilled labour to go into the United Kingdom as it's facing its post-war retirement boom and the fiscal gap. So there are opportunities for Nigerian companies to be able to fill the gaps that might be forming after Britain leaves the European Union. Remember, this is not Britain re-engaging with the Commonwealth because they suddenly feel nice about us Commonwealth countries. This is Britain renegotiating with the Commonwealth because they're desperate after Brexit. What approach do you reckon uh the African nations now uh, should have now in this meeting. Uh, recall, of course, you also have acknowledged that uh, the, the royal couple represents a country that once was a colonial master to mm. most of Africa. Yes, and I think what the African countries need to do, in fact, all for, former colonies need to do, is make it very clear to Great Britain we're very happy to engage as equals. We're very happy to engage as nation states. We're very happy to increase our trade and perhaps have free trade agreements based on our national interest, but not because you're, not, you're telling me to. And I find it quite bizarre as an Australian living in London, people are saying to me, well, now that we're leaving the European Union, of course you're going to trade more with us. To which my answer is, well, why? You know, most of our trade goes to the United States, Japan and uh, China. Why would we suddenly throw away those trade partnerships? So I think there's a really interesting um, wake up call for Britain. Yes, there's a bit of an affection for the British. Yes, the common language and the common law legal system gives us all an advantage to being able to trade together. But they've got to remember they're not the colonial bosses anymore. Well, the, the, the heads of Commonwealth have unanimously endorsed uh, the Duke to uh, lead the organisation, that's the Commonwealth. Are you confident that he will be able to do so effectively? 
Look, I think it can, but I think that was a great missed opportunity for Commonwealth countries to reinvent what the Commonwealth is. If the Commonwealth is going to be an alliance of equal partners, then why couldn't we have had a rotating presidency, a bit like the European Union? Now, uh, Rwanda will be hosting the next Commonwealth leaders meeting next year. Rwanda, of course, is one of the few Commonwealth countries that wasn't a colony and decided to join the Commonwealth because of other advantages that it sees. Now, imagine if the president of Rwanda was the president of the Commonwealth for the time um, that they were hosting. And next time Nigeria hosts the Commonwealth leaders meeting, they would be the acting president as well. I think it was a real missed opportunity for us to reinvent the Commonwealth by having a rotating presidency of member states. Mm. Now, Her Majesty the Queen has done a great job as Queen. She really has normally, she's very well advised, but I think this was very poor advice to have the Her Majesty insist that Prince Charles becomes her successor as the head of the Commonwealth, because the head of the Commonwealth is not a hereditary position. And if we're going to turn the Commonwealth into something useful, into a trading block, rather than mere former colonies smiling at each other and welcome, welcoming royals to visit every five or 10 years, then we need to send the signal back to Britain, we're not colonies anymore, you're not our boss anymore, you're not in charge, and we are going to be negotiating based on our national best interest and negotiating based on a team of equals. Oh, and right. then Commonwealth could be something good. Professor Andrew McLeod uh, from uh, the Policy Institute, King's College London, Thanks a lot for your time with TVC News. Thank you very much.